In this lecture, I will discuss about doubly reinforced beams. Okay, in the previous lecture, I have discussed about the singly reinforced beam where the top bar analysis is not discussed. In this doubly reinforced beams or doubly beams, I will discuss about the analysis of top bars also. What are doubly reinforced beams? Okay, here is the doubly reinforced beam figure. Beams having both tension and compression reinforcement. Okay, you can see above the neutral axis, compression is also uh, having the reinforcement, and below the neutral axis, the there is also present of reinforcement. Beams having both tension and compression reinforcement to allow the depth of the beam to be lesser than minimum depth for singly reinforced beam. When we design the singly reinforced beam, then we follow the D minimum criteria, means minimum effective depth criteria. We have to follow that restrict guidelines. But in doubly reinforced beam, there is no such restrict guidelines. We can go below the minimum depth. For example, if the uh, in the singly reinforced beam, the minimum depth is uh, 300 millimeter. But for the doubly reinforced beam, we can go for 250 millimeter or even a 2 to 5 millimeter. Okay, that is the main benefit of the doubly reinforced beams. Okay, beams having both tension and compression reinforcement to allow the depth of beam. Okay, allow uh, allowing the depth of the beam to be lesser than minimum depth for singly reinforced beams okay it is allow, allowing us to to go for minimum depth as compared to singly reinforced beam that is the main benefit of doubly reinforced beam by using lesser depth the lever arm reduces and to develop the same force more area of steel is required so solution is costly this doubly reinforced beam solution is costly. Why? You have seen the previous examples. Uh, on the top we have compression force and at the bottom we have the tension force. And the distance between the two forces is the lever arm. Okay. Uh, in the doubly reinforced beam the lever arm reduces. As the lever arm reduces the couple force will reduce. Okay. This and this lever arm reduces in the doubly reinforced beam so as a result the couple or the the movement force will reduce to to make or enhance the movement force the couple uh, the lever arm uh, will be remain constant but we can increase the reinforcement so we increase the reinforcement to make the same force okay we increase the uh, for example we increase this force by providing steel on top and similarly we also increase the steel at the bottom okay by increasing the steel okay we're getting the uh, higher force and by higher force the couple is small and uh, by multiplying this we get the same moment okay as per as per our requirements i will mm, repeat this sentence by using lesser depth the lever arm reduces okay by using the lesser depth of the section the lever arm between the forces reduces and to develop the same force more area of steel is required so solution is costly ductility will be increased by providing compression steel okay steel uh, has the property of ductility by providing steel we get the benefit of ductility Hanger bars can also be used as compression steel, reducing the cost up to certain uh, certain extent or certain cost. What it means? In the previous singly reinforced beams, we do not use these top bars or compression bars in the analysis. We use the top bars as just hanger bars for the hanging of ties or stirrups. But in the doubly reinforced beam, uh, the top bars we used in our analysis okay we do not use as a just for the hanging purpose we use in the forces and we use the magnitude of this area of steel in the analysis and design 
okay so when we use the top bars in the analysis and design that will also reduce the cost up to certain extent fourth point for high-rise buildings the extra cost of shallow deep beams is offset by saving due to less story height okay in singly reinforced beams we got we got many uh, uh, much larger heights okay of this uh, means we get large depths of the beams in singly reinforced beam but with the double reinforced beam we can go for smaller depths when we go for smaller depths we will get the large story height okay uh, we can use that benefit in the story height clear story height so for high rise buildings the extra cost of shallow deep beam the doubly reinforced beam is also shallow deep beam is offset by saving due to less story height okay then we have to provide the less story height due to doubly reinforced beam then we get more number of stories in a high rise building compression steel may reduce creep and shrinkage of concrete and thus reducing long term deflection the, in the long term deflection formula we uh, uh, we have to put the only the compression steel in the long term deflection calculations we have to put the compression steel okay and the compression steel comes only in doubly reinforced beam by providing the uh, compression steel we get lesser long term deflections we are reducing the long term deflections by providing the compression steel that is the also one benefit of doubly reinforced beam now in doubly reinforced beam the tension steel always yields the tension steel always yields tension steel always always yields in doubly reinforced beam there are two possible cases of doubly reinforced beams okay one thing is, uh, is understood that compression uh, tension steel always yield now uh, remaining steel is compression steel so there are two cases one case compression steel is yielding at ultimate conditions second compression steel is not yielding at ultimate condition that are the two cases of doubly reinforced beam so here is the uh, schematic uh, analysis diagrams okay here is a doubly reinforced beam the width of the beam is b the depth of the uh, the effective depth of the tension steel that is d height of um, uh, total depth of the beam okay total depth of the beam that is h and the effective depth of compression steel that is d dash okay just like uh, the tension steel that is from top fiber to the center of this bars that is d now what is d dash the, uh, in the compression steel the from top fiber to the center of the bars that is d dash okay here is a strain diagram in the strain diagram previously we have only uh, strain s the strain in tension steel now in this doubly reinforced beam we got also strain in compression steel that is strain s dash okay we denote the compression steel with dash and at the top that is a concrete okay we uh, the behavior we take in the uh, ultimate analysis is same that uh, under the neutral axis we ignore the concrete and above the neutral axis we consider the concrete okay so that's why at top fiber ultimate concrete stain is shown 0 0.003 okay the the height from the neutral axis to top fiber that is c now the equivalent stress block diagram by whitney okay c uh, the equivalent stress block diagram converted into a okay the uh, concrete stress that is 0 0.85 fc prime that is fc prime and the uh, the uh, stress in steel that is fs dash and stress in uh, tension steel that is fs okay 
previously we do not have this parameter we have only this stress in concrete and stress in uh, steel now we have one more parameter that is stress in compression steel that is a new parameter in w reinforced beam now here uh, now we have three stresses uh, now stresses and converted into forces by multiplying area okay uh, first of all this is uh, stress in steel so uh, stress in steel shown in the cs because that uh, uh, area of steel is provided in the compression so that's why it is shown is compression force with steel the second the compression force is concrete that is shown with c sub c okay at the bottom the tension steel that is uh, shown with t okay t is equal to as a, uh, fs area of steel in tension stress in steel in tension the lever arm uh, between the uh, concrete and the steel that is same d minus a by 2 now the new force that is a compression steel the lever arm is d minus d dash okay here is the d from the toe fiber when you subtract the d dash that will become the lever arm between this steel and this steel okay the lever arm here d minus d dash for cs now we uh, can get the stress if we have the strain in steel in uh, tension similarly we can get the stress in concrete uh, in compression steel if we have the uh, strain in steel in compression now here are the forces the tension steel here t is equal to as fs that is stress into area of steel compression steel that is as dash into fs dash the uh, compression force in concrete that is 0 0.85 fc prime ba this parameter uh, we already know this parameter we also uh, already know this is the new parameter in the w reinforced beam that is cs is equal to as dash fs dash stress in compression steel uh, area of steel of compression first case both tension and compression steel are yielding at ultimate condition okay uh, means the stress in steel okay in the tension steel is equal to yield and stress in compression steel is also yielding means tension and compression steel both are yielding location of neutral axis then we how to find we will find the location of neutral axis mean how we will uh, how we will find the witness stress uh, equivalent stress block depth means a consider equilibrium of forces in longitudinal directions means now these upper two forces compression in steel compression in concrete these both forces will be balanced by this total steel okay that's why equilibrium will exist means this force and this force for example this force this is 5 and this is 10 then the tension steel will have to balance by a, a, a accumulating uh, uh, of amount 15 okay 5 and 10 then this amount should be 15 okay then equilibrium will exist okay so here consider equilibrium of forces in longitudinal direction means tension steel is equal to compression of concrete plus uh, uh, compression of steel okay so now i will put just values tension is equal to area of steel into fy compression of in concrete 0 0.85 fc prime b a and compression in steel as dash fs dash now take as dash fs dash to the other side okay and divide this whole part accept a to the other side okay here is the formula as dash fs dash take to the other side okay then divide this uh, accept a to the other side okay and just take the common fy because the both tension and compression steel is yielding okay then you will get a okay depth of neutral axis and then you can get the uh, c neutral axis depth by just uh, c a divided by beta 1 
both tension and compression steel are yielding at ultimate condition now to get the strain in steel okay uh, in the compression steel we already have the expression for strain in tension steel but we do not have the expression for uh, strain in uh, compression steel okay so here comparing the here is a bigger triangle that is the a uh, a d e a d e the second triangle a b c a b c okay similar triangle uh, the depths okay uh, uh, this depth this a b depth that is c minus d dash that is c minus d dash now the bigger triangle depth that is c okay now here in the left side that is strain s dash there is this smaller triangle uh, width and here is a larger triangle width that is 0 0.03 here by similar triangle now take all the part to the other side you will get strain s dash okay then uh, to convert into a okay you already know c is equal to a over beta 1 you will put the values and you will get the result strain s dash 0 0.003 a minus beta 1 d dash a if strain s dash if strain in compression steel is greater than stra uh, yield strain then your steel will be yielding compression steel is yielding if strain s dash less than strain y compression steel is not yielding now total tensile force in steel okay that is t equal to t1 plus t2 it means this t have to balance these two forces okay due to compression in concrete due to compression in steel okay now this t have two components that is t1 plus t2 one t1 is balancing cc one t uh, second t2 is balancing cs okay here t1 is balancing t1 is balanced by cs okay and t2 is balanced by cc okay means this uh, tension steel have two components one uh, to balance these two forces one is t1 second is t2 okay just let's say t1 is balancing cs t2 is balancing cc okay uh, we can also simplify another small expression that we will use in the next slides if uh, we have just named t1 will be balanced by cs t2 will be balanced by cc then uh, we can also get t2 okay just t1 take to the other side okay you, this uh, this is just mathematic math, math, mathematical it will not make any problem okay here moment capacity by compression steel okay moment capacity by compression steel okay here uh, is the lever arm now first of all by C, uh, cs okay the compression force into lever arm compression force is cs okay compression force is cs lever arm is d minus d dash d minus d dash that is movement force into lever arm now cs value is as dash fs uh, fy dash okay it is fs dash or fs dash that will off of the compression steel now second mn2 moment capacity by concrete that is cc that is t2 okay uh, the lever arm for the concrete that is same d minus a by 2 okay equal or you can use t2 d minus a by 2 in the t2 i have shown in the previous slide we can also write that t minus t1 okay t is the total steel that is of tension as fy minus t1 of the compression steel that is as dash fs dash okay here now you can write uh, full moment capacity by this section by concrete and by steel okay that is a to total moment capacity mn is equal to mn1 plus mn2 mn1 by compression steel mn2 by concrete okay concrete is uh, that is t1 that is t2 the t2 here that is t minus t1 okay here as 
dash f s dash d minus d dash plus a s f y minus a s dash f y dash into d minus a by 2. Now second case compression steel is not yielding okay tension steel is yielding in W reinforced beam. Now the uh, second case is compression steel is not yielding okay means uh, uh, it is less than stress in uh, steel of compression that is less than yield stress okay fs dash will be equal to e into strain s dash the expression of strain s dash we already got okay that is 0 0.003 a minus beta 1 d dash over a multiplied with uh, modulus of elasticity then we got the value of 600 now we got the uh, fs dash value okay then the location of neural axis will be calculated as a into as fy divided by 0 0.85 fc prime b and here naught will be used fy will be used fs dash okay because stress is less than yield okay Th then we can get the value of c at uh, neutral axis depth c is equal to a over beta example number one Example number one, a doubly reinforced section has the following sectional properties. Area of steel in compression that is 570 millimeter square. Area of steel in tension that is 3042 millimeter square. D dash means effective depth of compression steel that is 60 millimeter. B is 300 millimeter. Fy 300 megapascal. Okay and calculate the moment capacity for the following two cases first case when the concrete strength is 20 megapascal and the effective depth of the section is 525 millimeter second case uh, concrete strength is 35 megapascal means grade of grade of concrete is 35 c35 and the effective depth is 225 millimeter 